Hello and welcome back. I'm Teresa Garcia, or Amehana Arashi, your narrator for the evening. Today I'm reading for you a selection of poems from 170 Chinese poems as translated by Arthur Whaley. Chapter 3 Poems by Dao Qin 1. Shady, shady the wood in front of the hall, at midsummer full of calm shadows. The south wind follows summer's train, with its eddying puffs it blows open my coat. I am free from ties and can live a life of retirement. When I rise from sleep, I play with books and harp. The lettuce in the garden still grows moist. Of last year's grain there is always plenty left. Self-support should maintain strict limits. More than enough is not what I want. I grind millet and make good wine. When the wine is heated, I pour it out for myself. My little children are playing at my side. Learning to talk, they babble unformed sounds. These things have made me happy again. And I forget my lost cap of office. Distant. Distant I gaze at the white clouds. With a deep yearning, I think of the sages of antiquity. 2. In the quiet of the morning I heard a knock at my door. I threw on my clothes and opened it myself. I asked who it was who had come so early to see me. He said he was a peasant, coming with good intent. He brought a present of wine and rice soup believing that I had fallen on evil days. You live in rags under a thatched roof, and seem to have no desire for a better lot. The rest of mankind all have the same ambitions. You too must learn to wallow in their mire. Old man, I am impressed by what you say, but my soul is not fashioned like other men's. To drive in their rut I might perhaps learn, to be untrue to myself could only lead to muddle. Let us drink and enjoy together the wine you have brought, for my course is set and cannot now be altered. 3. A long time ago I went on a journey, right to the corner of the eastern ocean. The road there was long and winding, and stormy waves barred my path. What made me go this way? Hunger drove me into the world. I tried hard to fill my belly, and even a little seemed a lot. But this was clearly a bad bargain, so I went home and lived in idleness. 4. Substance, Shadow, and Spirit High and low, wise and simple, all busily hoard up the moments of life, how great they err. Therefore I have to the uttermost exposed the bitterness both of substance and shadow, and have made spirit show how, by following nature, we may dissolve this bitterness. Substance speaks to shadow. Heaven and earth exist forever. Mountains and rivers never change. But herbs and trees in perpetual rotation are renovated and withered by the dews and frosts. And man the wise, man the divine, shall he alone escape this law? Fortuitously appearing for a moment in the world, he suddenly departs, never to return. How can he know that the friends he has left are missing him in thinking of him? Only the things that he used remain. They look upon them and their tears flow. Me no magical arts can save, though you may hope for a wizard's aid. I beg you listen to this advice. When you can get wine, be sure to drink it. Shadow replies, There is no way to preserve life. Drugs of immortality are instruments of folly. I would gladly wander in paradise, but it is far away and there is no road. Since the day that I was joined to you, we have shared all our joys and pains. While you rested in the shade, I left you a while. But till the end we shall be together. Our joint existence is impermanent. 
Sadly, together we shall slip away. That when the body decays, fame should also go, is a thought unendurable, burning the heart. Let us strive and labor, while yet we may, to do some deed that men will praise. Wine may in truth dispel our sorrow, but how compare it with lasting fame? Spirit expounds. God can only set in motion. He cannot control the things he has made. Man, the second of the three orders, owes his precedence to me. Though I am different from you, we were born involved in one another. Nor by any means can we escape the intimate sharing of good and ill. The three emperors were saintly men, yet today where are they? Peng lived to a great age, yet he went at last when he longed to stay. And later soon all go, wise and simple have no reprieve. Wine may bring forgetfulness, but does it not hasten old age? If you set your heart on noble deeds, if you set your heart on noble deeds, how do you know that any will praise you? By all this thinking you do me injury. You had better go where fate leads. Drift on the stream of infinite flux, without joy, without fear. When you must go, then go, and make as little fuss as you can. Peng was the Chinese Methuselah. Five. Chill and harsh the year draws to its close. In my cotton dress I seek sunlight on the porch. In the southern orchard all the leaves are gone. In the north garden rotting boughs lie heaped. I empty my cup and drink it down to the dregs. I look towards the kitchen, but no smoke rises. Poems and books lie piled beside my chair, but the light is going and I shall not have time to read them. My life here is not like the agony in Chen, but often I have to bear bitter reproaches. Let me then remember to calm my heart's distress that the sages of old were often in like case. Confucius was maltreated in Chin. Six, blaming sons, an apology for his own drunkenness. White hair covers my temples. I am wrinkled and seared beyond repair. And though I have got five sons, they all hate paper and brush. Ah Shu is eighteen. For laziness there is none like him. Ah Hu Swan does his best, but really loathes the fine arts. Yung Tuan is thirteen, but does not know six from seven. Tung Zhu, in his ninth year, is only concerned with things to eat. If heaven treats me like this, what can I do but fill my cup? Regarding not knowing six from seven, written in Chinese with two characters, they are very easy to distinguish. Seven. I built my hut in a zone of human habitation, yet near me there sounds no noise of horse or coach. Would you know how that is possible? A heart that is distant creates a wilderness round it. I pluck chrysanthemums under the eastern hedge. Then, gaze long at the distant summer hills. The mountain air is fresh at the dusk of day. The flying birds, two by two, return. In these things there lies a deep meaning. Yet, when we would express it, words suddenly fail us. 8. Moving House my old desire to live in the southern village was not because I had taken a fancy to the house, but I heard it was a place of simple-minded men, with whom it were a joy to spend the mornings and evenings. Many years I had longed to settle here. Now at last I have managed to move house. I do not mind if my cottage is rather small. So long as there's room enough for bed and mat. Often and often the neighbors come to see me, and with brave words discuss the things of old. Rare writings we read together in praise. 
Doubtful meanings we examine together and settle. 9. Returning to the Fields When I was young, I was out of tune with the herd. My only love was for the hills and mountains. Unwitting, I fell into the web of the world's dust and was not free until my thirtieth year. The migrant bird longs for the old wood. The fish in the tank thinks of its native pool. I had rescued from wilderness a patch of the southern moor, and, still rustic, I returned to field and garden. My ground covers no more than ten acres. My thatched cottage has eight or nine rooms. Elms and willows cluster by the eaves. Peach trees and plum trees grow before the hall. Hazy, hazy the distant hamlets of men. Steady the smoke of the half-deserted village. A dog barks somewhere in the deep lanes. A cock crows at the top of the mulberry tree. At gate and courtyard no murmur of the world's dust. In the empty rooms, leisure and deep stillness. Long I lived, checked by the bars of a cage. Now I have turned again to nature and freedom. 10. Reading the Book of Hills and Seas In the month of June the grass grows high, and round my cottage thick-leaved branches sway. There is not a bird but delights in the place where it rests, and I, too, love my thatched cottage. I have done my plowing. I have sown my seed. Again I have time to sit and read my books. In the narrow lane there are no deep ruts. Often my friends' carriages turn back. In high spirits I pour out my spring wine and pluck the lettuce growing in my garden. A gentle rain comes stealing up from the east, and a sweet wind bears it company. My thoughts float idly over the story of King Chu. My eyes wander over the pictures of hills and seas. At a single glance, I survey the whole universe. He will never be happy, whom such pleasures fail to please. 11. Flood The lingering clouds rolling, rolling, and the settled rain dripping, dripping. In the eight directions the same dusk, the level lands one great river. Wine I have, wine I have. Idly I drink at the eastern window. Longingly I think of my friends, but neither boat nor carriage comes. 12. New Corn Swiftly the years beyond recall, solemn the stillness of this fair morning. I will clothe myself in spring clothing and visit the slopes of the eastern hill. By the mountain stream a mist hovers, hovers a moment, then scatters. There comes a wind blowing from the south that brushes the fields of new corn. And that was chapter 3 out of 170 Chinese poems is translated by Arthur Whaley. If you enjoyed this, please do click like, subscribe, hit the little bell if there's a little bell for notifications, share, talk about it with friends, or you can visit me at my Patreon and possibly even become a patron to get to hear or see things before they go to public. And sometimes, depending on your tier level, get little freebies. You can also go to www.flashfiction.com to subscribe to the podcast version of my readings. That website focuses mainly on flash fictions, but depending on what gets submitted, I will read what there is. Until next time, happy reading.